Hi, guy. Would you like to talk about your harps on internet TV? Sure. If you give me a link for it. Okay, no problem. We're going to show you something really, really cool here, folks. We're going to talk to the artist. What's your name, guy? My name's Steve Cameron. Hey, Steve. Glad to meet you. Let me switch places with you here. Okay. There we go. Now I can get you in the light there. Wait, that didn't work. One more time. There we One go. One more time. Okay. Go ahead. Tell us a little bit about your artwork. These are Aeolian harps. Okay. They are considered to be. They were considered to be a dead art after the beginning of the 20th century. World War One pretty well killed them. You don't find very much information about them. These. Good to go. Yep, we're good to go. There we go. These are Aeolian harps. These originally come from ancient Greece. The Greeks believed that the, because they are played untouched by human hands, this is where all music came from. It was a gift from the gods. It's named after the Greek keeper of the winds, Aeolus. And when Zeus would command Aeolus to let his winds out to play, the winds would come, they would blow across the strings, and they would create music. What you hear in the background playing is a 24-inch window harp, which is actually this harp in particular, playing in the windowsill of my farmhouse. And these are the most basic of all Aeolian harps. What you do is you place them in the windowsill. If it's double hung, you place it horizontally. If it's a vertical slider, then you stand it up in the window, put your fingers on top of the strings, and close the window until the window touches your fingers, pull your fingers out, so there's a gap for the wind to blow over on top of the strings. What happens is that it's very much like the pictures of that old Tacoma River Bridge. The wind was blowing down the strait, and then the bridge deck started flopping in the breezes. Well, that was the natural frequency of that bridge deck. And what happens with these is that they vibrate their natural frequencies. The sound box amplifies the sound, and it produces music of the spheres. Or wow. Music from the spirit of the wind. They have inspired poets, authors, and composers for centuries. Wow, this is the first I've ever heard of these. These are these are all what you see in behind around these booths, or around this booth, is are key pieces in the history of modern history of the Aeolian harp. If you start looking up the Aeolian harp on the internet, these are the first pieces that you will find. That in the corner is a recreation of a Aeolian harp designed for to be placed in a garden. This article here is a re is from an 1883 Scientific American article highlighting the Aeolian harp <laughs> and explaining its history. This one was designed to be placed outside in the garden. It has big wings on it, gathers the wind, pushes the wind down over top of the strings. We have a sound box here. The sound box is double strung. There are strings on each side. It is dimensionally accurate recreation of that harp. This is done in pecan, and this is done in black walnut, and it is finished in an ancient pine tar mixture that has been used in Scandinavia for over a thousand years. There are outdoor structures in Sweden that have been preserved in the finish that is on that harp that we've withstood the elements of Sweden for 600 years. This is a recreation of one from 1761. This one is considered to be the first modern Aeolian harp done by Athanasius Kircher, who was a Jesuit priest in Rome. It's done in Rifson Cherry, and it is finished in the same ancient mixture as the other harp was finished in. He's considered to be father of the modern Aeolian harp, not because he's the first person to ever make it, but because he's the first person to ever document it. He wrote about and described the Aeolian harp in his text, Mysurgia Universalis. I, because this was a key piece in the history of the Aeolian harp, I got copies of the original Latin text from a library in Germany, and then I recreated this piece based on his descriptions in the Latin texts. Wow. You are totally into this. Now, do this, you sell these things? Oh, absolutely. This one is a recreation of one. It was from the beginning of the 1800s. This is Gabe and Kastner's harp. It is done in Willow. It is finished in clear pearl latex. This is the harp that Frederick Chopin listened to when he created his piece based on the Aeolian harp. Wow. Man, how did I miss all this stuff? 
<laughs> now, what's your website? www.windharps.net. Okay, say that once again. Windharps.net. W I N D H A R P S dot net. Okay. You can follow me on Twitter. I am Windharps on Twitter. I also have a fan page on Facebook. And you can find me and follow my work and what I do on Facebook as well. And there's a lot of information on Facebook on, on how the Aeolian harp works and how they were designed and how they were created. And uh, hopefully it'll carry on for a, for a long, long time. But if you wish to find out something about this interesting history, Facebook would be a good place to go. And you can find out again what I'm doing on Twitter. All you have to do, my name is Steve Cameron. Look me up on the internet. Go Steve Cameron Wind Harps and you will find out all kinds of information about me. And you will be able to find me relatively easy on the internet based on my work for Wind Harps. This one that you see in behind you here, this is my design. This is a garden harp, just as that first one you saw from 1883, or from Scientific American was a garden harp. This is my own design. It's beside, designed to be placed in an English-style garden or out by a pond, somewhere that's got unencumbered wind. There are two strong soundboards here. As you can see, these wings, just like the wings on all the other harps, gather the wind, push the wind down over top of the strings, so this will catch the prevailing winds east and west. Wow, these are fabulous, fabulous, Steve. I thank you very much for talking with us. It makes a very interesting with. story, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I, this is the first I've ever heard of these. You're not alone. And I'm going to do some more research on them real soon. And you will find them. And you know what? Even though you haven't heard of them, after you hear me talking about them and you start looking around, you will see and hear them. They have inspired poets, authors, and composers for centuries. And some people wonder you know, think I'm a, a snake oil salesman for making them because they're played by they're played by the wind. But I come with some really great references. This is one of my you know one of my card one of my cards. But here's a poem by Samuel Taylor Taylor Coleridge called the Aeolian Harp, written in 1795. And this is an example and effectively a reference of somebody that has listened to the Aeolian Harp and been inspired to write a piece of poetry. Right, so this this technology has been around for many, many years. 2,000 years. Right, and if somebody doesn't know about it, they just haven't been listening, right? Well, <laughs> it was a dead art. Yeah. You know, it, it's like there's a lot of things that have been lost through, there a lot of things that have been lost throughout history, and this is one of those things that has been lost in history. As I said, at the beginning of the 20th century, World War I really killed them because you don't find anything and then they just get lost in all the texts. How many things have been lost? How much knowledge has been lost over, you know, the millennium that, you know, that we could use today for all, kind, all kinds of different things. Right. And these come from a different time and a different place. If you want an iPod, then go buy an iPod because what these are are like a beautiful sunrise or a sunset or a starlit night. It is a natural phenomenon. It is the music of the spheres, music from the spirit of the wind. And you don't control what a sunrise or sunset looks like. These will inspire when the Greek gods come around to visit. Right. And all of a sudden you'll be sitting there. I have in my house, I have in any, every window of the house. And I'll be sitting there and there'll be, there'll be long periods of time that these don't play at all because the wind isn't right. And I'll be sitting there late at night in the computer doing something or another and then all of a sudden that right wind will pop up and then they start singing. And they go, yeah, that's right. Wow, I'll We're, bet it sounds really cool at your house. It does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. And With all of them going at once? Does Well, they don't all go at once, but what happens by putting them in all the windows is that as the wind shifts around the house, going from north, south, east, and west, as it tracks around the house, sometimes they don't play because the wind's not coming from the right angle to go over top of the strings to make right. it sing. But as the wind shifts around, then you'll hear them almost in a quad because sometimes the wind shifts a lot, you know, from, from you know, south to east or south to west. So you'll hear the south harps going, and then you'll hear it'll shift around, and then you'll hear the west harp going. Right. And, it'll shift and after a while, you can tell which way the wind's going by which ones you're listening to. Absolutely. Great. Give us your web address one more time, Steve. www.windharps.net, W-I-N-D-H-A-R-P-S.net. 
I'm on Twitter, Wintarps, and I'm also on Facebook, Steve Cameron Wintarps. Okay, thanks an awful lot for talking with us, Steve. Yeah. Thanks.